Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today we're going to talk about this cute, rare, little benign adnexal tumor, and this is called a cutaneous lymph adenoma. And the other name for this uh, that some people give it is adamantinoid trichoblastoma. However you do it, it's a lot of syllables, as many things are in Dermpath. But these are really nice little lesions, and I'll remember this lesion always, this particular case actually, because I remember previewing this when I was a resident, and um, I called it basal cell carcinoma, and one of my mentors, uh, uh, Ron Rapini, who I think is really fantastic, he said, oh, Jared, you missed the opportunity to make a really rare, cool diagnosis. And so I'll always remember, because of the, you know, the deep shame of missing that diagnosis, sometimes it's our, our mistakes and our misses that teach us um, a lot in the long run. You, you feel the pain of missing it, and you remember. So uh, it's a good, good learning technique. So this is a, a little dome-shaped nodule or, uh, or papule, um, uh, usually on the face of middle-aged adults, but it can really occur um, in any age group, um, at least in the literature it says it can, but in adults usually. And you can see that there are multiple islands of basaloid cells in the dermis, and they're surrounded by this background of kind of pink fibrous uh, stroma. So you can see there's kind of this like kind of stroma, if I can get the arrow right here, that kind of wraps around the whole tumor. You can kind of see where the tumor ends and how it's different from, you know, say the background dermis that you can see a bit of over here. Okay, let's go in for a closer look and see what these, what these nests are made of. Uh, here's a pretty good uh, example right here. What's really unique about these nests, they look kind of at first glance like basal cell carcinoma. Maybe that's just me trying to justify my failure to recognize it as a trainee. But they've got basaloid cells around the edge, even with a little bit of palisading sometimes. A couple things though that don't quite fit for basal cell, they don't have a cleft with mucin, which you often see in basal cell carcinoma. And if you need a refresher on the features of basal cell, um, I've got a whole video about basal cell kind of for beginners. Um, so uh, you, I'll put a link in the video description down below. You can check that out. Um, and then also the stroma around basal cells usually tends to be kind of myxoid or mucinous, kind of bluish and loose. And here we have kind of a more dense collagenous pink stroma with spindled fibroblasts in it. Okay, so those are, those are two features that kind of say this probably is not a basal cell. The other thing that's real distinct and probably more obvious is look at the middle of this nest. It looks very weird. Around the outside, the cells look kind of like basal cell carcinoma, these basaloid epithelial cells making a rim. But in the middle, the nest is kind of falling apart and you've got this loose mixture of cells. And I'll see if I can get it here on high power. What we're seeing here are a variety of different cells. Some of these are detached, free-floating epithelial cells. Some of them are histiocytes and Langerhans cells. And some of them, these probably these, these bigger pale guys, at least some of those probably are histiocytic cells, although it can be hard to tell apart. Um, you can use stains, but honestly, this is a, such a recognizable tumor on H&E when you're used to it that I don't think you really need stains in most cases. And then these little small dark cells are lymphocytes. So you have a mixture of lymphs, histiocytes, Langerhans cells, and, and detached um, epithelial tumor cells filling the center of these space. So some people have likened these to cannolis. We, in pathology, we like to make uh, food analogies and cannolis, those, those tasty little Italian desserts that have the kind of crunchy pastry shell and they're filled with a delicious filling. So the idea is that the, the basaloid cells are kind of the crispy pastry shell and then here's the filling of the cannoli. So I think that's kind of a, a fun analogy. Here's another uh, island and you can see again basaloid and palisading around the outside. In the middle, you've got all of the detached kind of mixture of cells filling the little cannoli island there. And I wanna also point out that in this case, you don't always have this, but this structure right here is a papillary mesenchymal body. And I don't think I've made a video yet on trichoepitheliomas, but basically this structure is seen in trichoepitheliomas. These are round, like kind of uh, stromal cells. They look like they might be epithelial, but they're actually not. If you do a keratin stain, those cells will be negative. These are actually modified stromal cells from the dermis pushing in and making this kind of ball that invaginates into the basaloid island. Here's another one right here. You can see the stroma. Let me go down a little bit. You can see these spindled stromal cells here are starting to become more and more round as they get closer to the island. And then they're pushing in and indenting the basaloid nest. So that's a very characteristic feature of benign um, uh, hair follicle tumors. So I think it does kind of support the idea that these, these things, whether they're actually a trichoblastoma or a variant of, of something else, whatever, it doesn't really matter. They're benign and they are probably of hair follicle origin. I, I personally like that idea and I think that this kind of finding supports that. So anyway, that's a papillary mesenchymal body. And what these are, these are analogous to the hair papilla, which is the modified stroma that pushes into the hair bulb or hair roots. So next time you see a nice 
section of scalp skin, go down and look at some of the hair bulbs, and you'll see this little um, little polypoid looking thing of, of stroma with some vessels in it pushing into the, the hair bulb, and that's basically the hair papilla. And this uh, structure, the papillary mesenchymal body, is recapitulating that. So when you see these, it's a good sign that you're dealing with a benign follicular tumor. So really nice example of several different features here. Um, and again, the, the distinct appearance of these kind of islands filled with other cells uh, is really helpful. Um, here's some more islands here, and you can see the same thing um, as in the other islands, okay? Now let's look at a couple other cases. I've only seen a handful of these, so I don't have very many in my uh, collection. This one was um, uh, donated to me kindly by one of my former fellows, uh, Dr. Hillary Elwood. Uh, in fact, uh, my very first fellow uh, from when I entered practice. So it's always nice to have contributions from a former trainee and see the amazing cases that they're diagnosing in their practice. Here's a really nice example. It's a very circumscribed nodule, right? It doesn't have a capsule around it, but you can clearly tell, again, the islands are kind of busy and all scattered around in the middle. But if you go around the outside of the lesion, this is a nicely circumscribed lesion, and you can see how the stroma is kind of tightly um, intermingled with the tumor nests and clearly distinct from the background reticular uh, dermis, which has nice distinct chunky collagen bundles. Uh, let's look closer at that. Just because why not? We're already here. So look, that's a reticular dermal collagen, big chunky bundles. And if you need help um, remembering the different um, features of basic normal skin histology, I got a video for that also. It's like an hour and 15 minute marathon of basically everything I know about normal skin histology. So if you need a refresher, I'll put that link in the video description too, and you can check that out um, in your spare time or if you need something to help you sleep at night. Okay, so this is reticular dermal collagen bundles. And then look at the, oh, the stroma here, sorry, a little hard to, to move this. Look at the stroma here, very fine collagen, little thin threads of it squished together with a lot of spindled fibroblasts in the background. And this stromal structure, again, this is similar not just for um, uh, cutaneous lymphadenoma, but you see it in, uh, in other hair follicle tumors like trichoepitheliomas and trichoblastomas. And it's analogous to the adventitia, which is the layer of specialized dermis that wraps around the normal hair. So if you look at the outside of a normal hair, it has kind of a layer of fibrous stuff and specialized fibroblasts there um, that make the adventitia. And that's what's being recapitulated capitulated here in this in this tumor and in other hair follicle tumors. Again, you can see that there's this mixture of detached cells, big ones, but probably histiocytes, some epithelial cells, lymphocytes, all mingled together in the middle of the islands here. Very distinct. It looks very much like that case um, I initially showed you. Really nice example of, um, of a cutaneous lymph adenoma here. And I think I've got one more. All right, more of the same, right? So if you've seen three, I guess you've seen them all. Um, they really have that distinct appearance at low power. Look here, this one really nicely shows how the, the island is outlined by basal cells, right? You've got this layer of intact basaloid epithelium, you know, kind of like a thick, you know, thick line drawn with a marker or something around the outside of each nest, and then the middle is all haphazard and, and filled up with this um, this mixed infiltrate of uh, cells. And we'll get a closer view one last time. Quite beautiful, really cool, and um, also great news for the patient because as far as we know, these are quite rare and we don't have a ton of literature on them, but from what we know, they basically don't recur and they don't metastasize. They behave in a benign fashion or usually cured by a simple local excision. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for this and other unusual hair follicle tumors because um, if you're going uh, quickly and not paying attention, uh, it's easy to see how you could mistake this. Uh, for a basal cell carcinoma. And particularly this one is a little weird because down at the bottom, it does have some areas that look kind of like they might be infiltrative. If you just had that, you would definitely think of infiltrative basal cell. I suspect though that this is a kind of a busy area that's kind of similar to what we see in some other hair follicle tumors like desmoplastic uh, trichoep and desmoplastic trichelomoma where you can have these cord-like islands um, that look like they're infiltrating, but probably if we saw this whole lesion, I imagine um, this would have a, a circumscribed border like the last case that I showed. But the features up here are so incredibly distinct that I think this just must be a cutaneous lymphadenoma rather than a basal cell uh, 
carcinoma. So um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this uh, visit with a, a cute little uh, friend here. And um, if you uh, have seen these in your practice, uh, let me know down below. I'm curious to see how many people have seen these. And um, uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified of new videos. And as always, leave comments and questions uh, down below and let me know what other things you'd like to see videos about. Uh, thanks again. Have a great day.